What is up guys? I am Hot Take Jake and this is my hot take on Spirit of the North. Now, to be fair, I did play on the Nintendo Switch version, which I don't know if it is any different than the PS4 version or the PC version. I have not um, looked up footage of the game other than a speedrun of the Switch game, not because I needed help with the game. The game is actually very easy, and I'll get into that, but um, because I was curious after I beat the game if there were any glitches I could have utilized that would have made the experience a little bit more fun in the speedrun sense, and also see like maybe if there is some kind of active community for this game, which from what I looked up, it doesn't look like there's much of one. Um, but anyways, the... Uh, game itself the advertisement kind of makes it look like it's the next okami like that it's a love letter to okami which it definitely felt more like journey if i had to pick a game to compare it to you start off in this vast open snowy field but you have a set path that you have to go you're given very limited leeway uh, if you reach anywhere on the level geometry that is designated the border the wall will push you back inward toward inbounds. Um, it's a 100% linear experience. There's nothing that you can do out of order outside of glitches. Uh, there's no sequence breaking to do. Uh, there's not even much in the way of completion, honestly. Uh, there's these guys, these shamans, as uh, according to the PlayStation trophies, uh, the, they're called shamans, but during my playthrough, while I was playing, my son was watching, he called them the dudes, and I called them the dudes, I also had a friend who was playing the game, and she referred to them as the, uh, what the fuck word did she use, sorcerers, mages, the mages, um, there's a, I think, 30 mages in the game, no, there's gotta be more than that, there's a buttload of mages throughout the game, and you, what you do is, in the first area, you'll inevitably find a staff, and when you get closer to the shaman, the staff will glow, and it'll crackle, and it'll emit this blue flame, uh, or white flame, maybe, and uh, you bring it to the dude, and he melts snow, granting you your path forward, and this is your only indication that these guys are of any sort of importance, a little HUD pops up and it shows you the dude, a list of dudes in the ground and one dude standing upright, which is supposed to be symbolic of him being revived or resurrected or something. Uh, it acts as a decent checklist once you figure out what's going on. It took me a second to do that. Um, there's, so the fox you play as, you play as a fox. And you go through and you find this spirit fox who leads you to an area that is new. And then the spirit fox becomes a little ball of light. And throughout the game, you gain like a power per chapter. And these powers help you solve puzzles, navigate terrain, um, and shit. And there's, the puzzles are very basic, rudimentary puzzles, um, timed challenges or solve the picture puzzle uh, and like i said the, there's a comparison i would make to journey where um one of your abilities is you can absorb energy from these flowers and you can deposit the energy into stones to activate um level terrain but uh, there's a stone that you can actually take the energy and put it in and all it is is this like hieroglyphic of a bunch of people resting under a mountain, which I guess is supposed to imply that the shamans that you're reviving and possibly the people that lived among them uh, are buried under the mountain, which, you know, that's, that's cool. That's awesome detail. And it reminds me very much of finding the secret walls in um, Journey and using the charged blast to get like a little bit of j just a little bit of world building you know but like i said much like journey it is very 
linear. There's not a whole lot of deviation from the path that you can take. The game very much leads you where you're supposed to go. Uh, and the, there's some puzzles. There, there are some puzzles that actually made me go, okay, what the hell do I do? I'll admit that. But once you have a basic understanding of everything that could happen in the game, um, it, it becomes easier and easier to solve the puzzles. And um, if you manage to not collect all of the dudes by the end of the game, there is a nifty little chapter select option from the start menu. So you can start back from any specific chunk of the game where you may have missed the guy. And also, the staff that you bring the person does not necessarily have to be the staff that's supposed to be designated to them. There are the same amount of staffs as staves as there are shamans. But if you bring a stav, staff to a shaman that it does not correlate to, it does not um, affect that you still rescued that guy. You cannot reuse his cane, um, and that is where I would say that there's kind of an exploit in the system where you, you can um, use a dude's cane that you know where he is, and then use the dude's cane to wander around until you see the white glowies at the end of the staff, and then you use that as kind of a metal detector for finding the guy. Um, once you end a chapter segment, it's there, there's a set amount of distance that you're allowed to go before it will cut off the going backward that you're allowed to do. So I believe that's a fail safe for the people that figured that out to, so that the developers could try and encourage you to find the proper staff for the dudes. But um, beyond that, if you find that you can't find a dude, you can at any point just reset the chapter, find a staff that you're looking for, uh, find a staff of a dude that you already found, maybe, and then just go around and find it. Um, and what do you get for collecting all these dudes? Because it is not mandatory to collect all of these dudes. There are some that stand in your way, in your path, that you will inevitably, inevitably come across. And giving them back their staff is the solution to a certain puzzle, or the very end step of a certain puzzle, uh, just to move and advance forward, but those moments are few and far between. Um, and you have unlockable skins that you can unlock. Uh, there are five to unlock, and you get your base one, so that's six. And other than that, finding all of the guys, staves, does absolutely fucking nothing for you. I'm sorry for people who are completionists that were thinking... Oh man, this game's gonna be fun. I can't wait to find out what you get. You get nothing. Sorry to spoil it for you. At least I didn't spoil the ending of the game itself. I would not do that. Um, the completion bonus is bunk. And it made me sad because I endured this experience of trying to find all these dudes for alternate skins. Uh, and anyways, I, I, don't, I don't feel like it was worth it. You know, graphically, I feel like the game chugs a little bit and does not load as much as I would expect the power of the Nintendo Switch to be able to load. I don't know if that's on the developers, but I, I feel like this game could have looked much more gorgeous than it does, especially because the game came out in 2019. Um, it just is not visually impressive. I would say maybe the skybox, um, some of the particle effects are nice, but it's just not amazing looking, and it's not nostalgic looking, and the music, while it is beautiful and peaceful, and I like having it just to relax to, there's not a whole lot of songs in the game, and when you're in specific area the song that you're listening to will loop like there's no getting around it you're not gonna get out of an area before a song loops it's just not gonna happen um what it does have in common with okami perhaps maybe 
is that there's like some overtone of nature versus pollution, I guess. Um, like you howl at infested nest eggs of darkness to heal an area before you move on. Um, it's definitely more like Journey, like I said. Um, although Journey didn't really have any complicated puzzles. Usually it was just like moving forward, absorbing scarf, whatnot. Um, so what would I rate this game? I, I honestly, I could not recommend this game. Um, unless you are just into like walk simulators. And even then, it, you're probably too casual to handle what little the game has in terms of puzzle solving. If you're definitely an avid gamer, I w could not recommend it to you because it is simply just barren and deserted when it comes to challenge. Um, no, that's not 100% true. It, the game controls so awkward and clunky and... I fell a lot of times when I know I should not have fallen, and I'm used to that because I played Super Mario 64 hell a lot, and just knowing that at any point I could screw up this jump just by being a little bit too fast, or because I didn't hit the run button soon enough, or because there's input lag on the jump button, there is, there's input lag because your fox dips down and then does the jump and it's like also you're controlling a quadruped which is not he's not fluid like they make it fluid in okami but that game's cartoony and colorful and you're playing as a god and even then there's like weird janky shit that can happen when you're a quadruped i legend of zelda twilight princess i fucking hate playing as the wolf i feel like the control is just so wonky and it, it, it's slow. The game is slow. You do eventually get a sprint move, but there's also a part where you break your leg, and there, the beginning part, you don't have the sprint move, so you have to fucking walk along this snowy path to the through the glaciers, and if you want to replay the game, you have to do it over again, and it's the slow slog when you're used to having the ability to run, and your fox even has, like, stamina to him. He, you can only go so far in running before you have to stop and let him catch a breather. And when you jump in the water, when you jump in the water in this game, and you jump out of the water, the fucking fox shakes off every time. Not every time. Sometimes I've managed to come out of water and it not happen. But he fucking shakes off when you get out of the water, like 95% of the time. It is awful, and I hate it. I hate waiting in video games. And there are a lot of jumps where I know I should have been able to make... I know, I fucking already said this, but... God damn, it is so obnoxious to miss a jump, end up miles below where you were, and have to climb your ass back up along a path of difficult-to-make jumps until you finally get that one perfect combination right. It's just... It, I. So the game does have challenge, but it's not... The fun kind of challenge and that's my hot take i'm hot take jake uh, take care